On Sunday, we saw Derrick Henry go down with a foot injury, and there had been some speculation as to what exactly is going on in his foot, and it looks like today's sources are now saying that Derrick Henry is in fact dealing with a fracture in his foot, and he's scheduled to have surgery. Some sources have even gone specific enough to let us know that he's dealing with what is known as a Jones fracture in the foot, and currently it looks like the timetable to recovery is about anywhere between six to 10 weeks. A Jones fracture is actually a very specific type of an injury to a specific area of the foot. And since a lot of people may not be too familiar with this, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on that with this video. Welcome back sports fans. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with my channel, I take a look at sports injuries and I try to explain them so that they are a little bit easier to understand. Then if we know the specific injury, then I go ahead and talk about the anatomy of that injury. And finally, I'll talk about what that person should expect when in the rehab process. If you like this content and you want to see more of it, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now here seems to be the play that Henry aggravated that right foot. We see it's just a typical run play and as he gets tangled up here, we see that he twists a little bit and he falls to the turf. Now after this play, this of course was when he was on the sidelines, that's when they had his shoe off and it looked like they were looking at that right foot, but surprisingly Henry actually played for the remainder of the game with that injured right foot. Now, here I have a model of the foot, and when we hear about somebody suffering a foot injury, typically the area that they are referring to is going to be either in the metatarsals, which are right in through here. We have five, one for each toe, and also this could include the bones that are also known as the tarsals, and they are right in through there. Now, as we go from back to front on the foot here, the first one is known as the calcaneus. This is just an extension of the heel bone going into the foot. Then as we move on down, we're going to have what's known as the cuboid bone right in through here. And as we move towards the medial or inside portion, this is known as the navicular bone. Then finally, as we move on down the foot again, we have three bones that are known as the cuneiforms, and you have the medial cuneiform, you have the intermediate cuneiform, and finally, the lateral cuneiform, which is right here next to that cuboid. As we move on down from the tarsal bones, once again, these are the metatarsals, and they are numbered just like we would think the toes are. The first one is going to coincide with the big toe. So this is your first metatarsal, second metatarsal, third, fourth, and fifth. Now, when they first started describing Henry's injury as a foot injury, I knew it was pertaining to one of these structures, but some sources have even said that it looks like it is a Jones fracture. And this is actually a very specific type of fracture that's located actually in the base of the fifth metatarsal, which is right in through here. Once again, this is our fifth metatarsal because it's furthermost out laterally. And this is the metatarsal that actually coincides with the small fifth or what some refer to as the pinky toe. Now, there are a few ways that a person can sustain a Jones fracture. Typically, what'll happen is a person will injure this area of the foot if they start to increase their training or they start to increase their workload that they're placing through the foot. If they happen to gain weight or they are running on uneven surfaces, or if the mechanism of injury has to do with a sudden lateral shift of movement or going from side to side, or if there is a rotational component that puts a rotational force going through the foot. Now, this is not a very obvious injury video. I see that after this play, this is of course when he's getting evaluated by the trainers and they're looking at that foot. But in this video, of course, we see that he sort of gets twisted up. I know that being a running back, he has a lot of workload going through his feet on a daily basis. He's doing a lot of lateral movements. He can walk on uneven surfaces as well. So it could be that this moment was essentially just the straw that broke the camel's back and caused that fracture, or maybe he was dealing with something leading up to this. It's really hard to tell, but surprisingly, they did allow him to play the remainder of the game. So at the time, they must not have been too concerned with it, but later on, it looks like they did have imaging on the foot, which must have shown the Jones fracture. 
One thing that is very unique about a Jones fracture and can be potentially problematic is the fact that when a person suffers a bad enough fracture to this area, this can actually disrupt blood flow to the fifth metatarsal. Now this is a major problem because if this occurs, this is essentially preventing that bone from getting that nutrient rich blood. And over time, if it's deprived of this for long enough, this can create something known as a vascular necrosis. If a bone suffers from a vascular necrosis, essentially what will happen is the bone will die and eventually collapse. So this can be a major issue and it's something that definitely should not be taken lightly. Another thing that can occur in a Jones fracture is something known as a non-union. This is essentially where the bone will not heal on its own. And a lot of times if this happens or if the injury is traumatic enough, it's very displaced or it's displaced in several areas, then surgery is indicated. Therefore, it's very possible that one of these cases was going on with Henry, and so they elected for him to have surgery soon. And a lot of times when they do this, essentially what they're going to do is place a screw in order to essentially hold the bone together and allow it to heal properly. Generally speaking, when we get somebody in physical therapy after Jones fracture surgery, typically they're going to go through a period of immobilization, essentially where they cannot be weight bearing through that foot. Obviously they want to take as much time and allow everything to heal properly. Then as things start to progress and they start to see healing through the x-ray or whatever imaging that person is having, then you can start to slightly introduce weight bearing, but it depends on the case. This of course will be done progressively and it will be done usually when a person is immobilized in some sort of a walking boot. Then as the person progresses and their imaging looks good, then we can start to get a little more aggressive. We're going to work on range of motion of the foot and ankle because we want everything to move properly as it did before. Then we can start to add in some strengthening exercises. And finally, when it's appropriate, we can start to put in a lot of balance and then finally sport specific movements when it is appropriate for the person. Generally speaking, a Jones fracture can take upwards of about 10 weeks. It really depends on the person and it depends on a number of factors, whether the healing is going along as scheduled or healing is delayed as we've seen in other cases. So as of right now, I know they've given it that time range of about six to 10 weeks. Generally speaking, a bone takes about six weeks to heal. That's just the normal healing time for a fracture. So in order for Henry to return to sport, he's going to need, of course, to have full healing of the affected area, and he's going to need to have adequate range of motion, strength, etc. So obviously six weeks is a pretty aggressive time frame, but it has happened. So I'm really just going to need to wait and pay attention and see how he does with his follow-up appointments until I can give an accurate timetable to his recovery. But if there happens to be any updates, I'll be sure to post it for everybody. And that's it as of right now regarding Derek Henry's most recent foot injury. I wish him the best of luck. Unfortunately, this happened to him when he's absolutely killing it this year. I was always a big Derek Henry fan, so to see him go down like this, it is very unfortunate and he does have some time ahead of him in rehab, but it looks like if he's able to recover fast enough that we may see him at the end of the year. Once again, thank you very much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.